So my favourite riff has to be, and it's quite difficult really, obviously playing with a band like Judas Priest, every song has got about 15 fantastic riffs in it. Uh, so it's, it's quite hard to pick up just pick just one, you know. Uh, but if if I had to, then I'm going to have to say the beginning of the Sentinel from the Defenders of the Faith album. It's got that big, grandiose, epic feel, and it goes straight into a, a fast riff afterwards. And those two together just create a great feeling, like the juxtaposition of the the long notes and then the fast notes. Um, and the first one goes like this. <laughs> So I think the the reason why they're my favourites is just the mood it sets up. You know, it's that again that big epic feel into the the, the fast notes after that, and then you're off into the song. I mean, I'd say for what if there was one riff that I would say that every guitar player should play or at least know how to play. Is it, again, there's a few of them. One of them uh, is probably breaking the law. By Judas Priest. Uh, another one would be uh, Voodoo Child by Jimi Hendrix. Um, there's, in both of these, there's nothing remarkably technical going on, but uh, there's rhythm and there's you know picking and uh, phrasing and all those, those sort of good things. So I think um, breaking the law is terribly easy. It's in A, it goes like this. <laughs> And I'd say the other one, uh, as I mentioned, is Jimi Hendrix's uh, Voodoo Child. Uh, mastering the wah pedal is, is a great tool in your box. So um, this riff contains a lot of wah, and you know Jimmy's fingerprint and anyone's fingerprint or footprint that uses the wah afterwards. You can tell a guitar player by the way they play a wah pedal. Uh, so I think it's a it's a great thing to have if you master the, the wah pedal. And this is a riff to do it with. It goes like this. Something like that, anyway, you get the idea. Um, again, there's a lot of nuance going on on the wah, on the note choice, on the way the notes are played and bent. Um, so yeah, Jimi Hendrix's Voodoo Child would be my second choice. So I'm a Gibson guy through and through, obviously. Uh, I've played some Les Pauls in my time, I've played some Vs, I've played some SGs. Uh, as far as body shape, at the moment, I'm obviously all about the V, and being in Priest for the last almost 13 years, I've built up a relationship with the V body shape, um, and it's my go-to now. But obviously, I'm familiar with the Les Paul as well. I love the way the Les Paul feels, the weight of a Les Paul. Um, but I'd, I'd have to say, at the moment, for me, it's the V hands down. I mean, everyone says that you can't sit down playing a V. I think it's the most natural guitar to sit down with, you know. And as my predecessor once said, why would you want to sit down and play it anyway? Um, so yeah, the V, the v shape is my favourite shape. Um, it's comfortable to play, you can reach the high notes, um, and it sings like a bird too. So, my most memorable studio moment, that I can remember at least, is uh, we were coming to the end of the Firepower sessions uh, and both our producers, Andy Sneap and Tom Allen, were in the studio with me, Glenn and Rob. We were getting some tracks down and a Hornet threw in, flew in through the window and flew up one of our producers, uh, Tom Allen's trouser leg or pant leg uh, and it stung him 
on the leg. And you can imagine, it's quite a small room um, and there's a hornet up someone's trousers. Uh, and so all he could do was get his pants off and frantically try and get the pants off before the hornet stung him again. I think it, it got him a few times, I think. But I'll always remember just that moment of Tom Allen hollering, screaming around the room, trying to get his pants off to get this hornet out of his leg. Um, and Andy Sneap actually caught the, we unfortunately killed the hornet. Um, but Andy Sneap uh, preserved it in a paperweight and, and gave it to Tom Allen for Christmas, as a Christmas present. And for that session, we all called him Colonel Tom the Hornet Alum. So yeah, that was one of the most uh, memorable moments that I can remember from the studio. It was fucking funny. It, it, we've got photos and everything. It was like, it's brilliant. Yeah, it's brilliant. Okay, so if, if the pedal police came through the door in the studio and took all my pedals and left me with one, uh, I would have to say, oh, well, I'd, I'd ask them to leave me the chorus pedal. I always use the chorus pedal. Um, it's something Zach Wilde used a lot uh, and something that I was obviously uh, influenced by because of Zach. Um, and I also, I used the chorus 95% of the time during live shows um, because I think it gives some movement to the sound um, and then EQ, that I can't get out of a, a static EQ. I have seen a band cover a Judas Priest track that I've been involved in, not in the flesh. I've seen it on uh, on online, maybe on YouTube. They had a video, and it was uh, Halls of Valhalla, I think, from the Redeemer of Souls record. Um, and they were great. Glenn, the the Glenn guy had his red pants, and KK had the the uh, Epiphone Flying V, uh, they, were, they were doing a really good job. I mean, they're doing a better job than, than I can these days, so uh, hats off to them.